What's going on, people of YouTube? So as many of you know, Honda updated their popular three-row crossover extensively last year. But that doesn't mean they took a break for 2020. What we have with us today is the brand new Pilot Black Edition, which is now the top trim level of the entire lineup. Of course, we would like to specially thank our friends at Gates Honda in Richmond, Kentucky for giving us access to this fully loaded pilot. And of course, if you're in the market for any new Honda, make sure you stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with all that said, let's see what the new Black Edition adds and any other 2020 changes. So starting things off with the exterior styling, clearly things have taken a more aggressive turn on this Black Edition. The shape of the fascia was just changed last year, but unlike every other trim in the lineup, the Black Edition is the only one with the black grille instead of the usual chrome finish. This gives it a particularly sinister look, since the only exterior color you can choose is black. But chrome trim aside, all the other features are shared with the Elite and all other trims stay the same this year. That means you'll continue to find LED low beam headlights and LED daytime running lights across every model, but if you choose the Touring or higher, you'll get these upgraded fully LED lights with this crystal design. Finally, there are LED fog lights on all but the base of LX. As far as the side and back are concerned, the Black Edition trades out all the usual elite chrome accents for body color instead. And it also smokes out the mostly LED taillights that Honda nicely includes across all trim levels regardless. Along the bottom, you will never find any exposed exhaust outlets, but when properly equipped with a towing hitch, it can handle either 3,500 or 5,000 pounds of towing with front or all-wheel drive respectively. But overall, Honda did a good job with this refresh last year, and this year's new Black Edition now brings another new dynamic to the lineup. Now turning to the wheels, this is the last key component that makes the Black Edition stand out. These are the all-black 20-inch accessory wheels, which are included in the Black Edition. They by themselves basically pay for the Black Edition upgrade, since they are normally offered as a $2,000 option on the Elite. Otherwise, the Touring and Elite continue to share 20-inch contrast alloys, and the LX through EXL share 18-inch alloys. Moving on to the mirrors, they are heated and have built-in blind spot monitoring on all but the base LX. But if you choose these top two trims, you'll also have power folding and auto dimming abilities. Now the last thing I'll mention is that the entire Honda Sensing suite of active safety features continues to be standard on all trims this year. Included within that are automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beam headlights, which is one of the most comprehensive suites in the segment. But anyways, that's it for the outside. So now let's see what's special about the Black Edition on the inside. So every version of the 2020 Honda Pilot will come standard with this key fob. Uh, however, you won't have smart entry unless you go for the EX trim. When you do have the smart entry system, that's where you'll also have the remote start system thrown in. Now of course, like any Honda, getting in is super simple. You do have a sensor behind the handle, so all you have to do is just grab it. All right, so checking out the cabin of the 2020 Pilot Black Edition. As you can see right off the bat, it does share, of course, the same design as the refreshed model last year. However, this Black Edition adds lots of unique touches. Now, every model besides for the Black Edition does come with these same three color choices. Those will be black, gray, or beige. Um, and then you have to go up to the EXL to get the leather seating like you see here. 
Now, of course, this black edition does have black seats uh, with the red color contrast stitching, which is unique to this model. Now, turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely appointed. As you can see, you've got leather covering most of it uh, with that red color contrast stitching for the special black edition, and the rest of it is soft touch as well. We also have memory seating, which is standard to the EXL level and up. Uh, and our front two windows are one touch auto up and down. As far as your seats, uh, going for any trim besides for the LX, we'll get you this 10-way power adjusting seat with the two-way lumbar support. And these seats, they're really my favorite part about this Black Edition, uh, as well as the other Black Edition models in the Honda lineup. Um, and that's because they have a really nice look to them. It's a little hard to see, but you basically have like red inside of the perforation, so it's like little red dots in the seats, as well as the red color contrast stitching and the embroidering up here. So definitely a very nice looking seat and the leather quality is very good. Now this black edition is based off of the Elite trim level. So as you'd expect, it does have the nicest stuff in the Pilot lineup. So across your upper dash here, you do have a soft touch plastic with a stitching detail across it. And then coming to your middle portion, it is soft touch here. And you have some piano black trim which runs all through the middle portion as well as down here. Now your lower areas are hard touch, but in typical Honda fashion, everything fits together seamlessly uh, without any panel gaps or anything like that. And then across the entire lineup, you do have push button start. When you press it, you'll find this 8-inch display fire up across almost all the trims except for the LX, which has a smaller 5-inch one. Now, one of the nicest updates to come out of last year's refresh is that you now have this 7-inch reconfigurable gauge cluster as standard equipment across the entire pilot range. Um, so what you do is you just use the steering wheel mounted buttons and you can cycle through various things here. Uh, so you've got like a home screen and you can go through different things like your navigation as well as some interesting things like your torque vectoring all-wheel drive system um, and of course your traditional stuff like your safety systems. Now coming back to your steering wheel, of course we do have electric power assisted steering. And like in various other places in the interior, we do have a special black edition steering wheel with the red color contrast stitching. As far as the rest of it, it is piano black. We've got our traditional buttons for our multi-function display, our phone and voice commands. And on this side, we have our adaptive cruise control as well as our heating, which comes standard on the Elite and the Black Edition. Uh, rain sensing wipers are the same way. Those are Elite and Black Edition exclusive. Um, but the steering wheel itself will always be manual, tilt and telescoping across the range. But anyways, that brings us to one of the pilot's strongest places, and that is storage. Um, Honda has really done a great job with this. It's just about as much as like in a Odyssey minivan. Um, one of the reasons why is because they've gone with kind of the minivan style armrest here. So what this does is free up all this center space so you can set something like right here on top of this storage tray. Um, and then when you open up the actual storage tray, as you can see, it is gigantic. It goes down a really far way. You have a removable pad down there, as well as a 12 volt outlet and a charging USB port. In addition to that, we've got our two cup holders and we have another large storage area right up here in the front. Great for sticking a phone. Um, as you can see, this is a wireless phone charger. It's going to be that way on the Elite and the Black Edition only. Um, but for the other models, you still do have a second charging USB port and a second 12 volt outlet. Now, in addition to the armrest, some of the space savings does come courtesy of this electronic shifter. Um, this is standard only on the models with the 9 speed automatic, so that's going to be your top trims. Um, otherwise, you'll have a traditional one. But just like in uh, other Honda and Acura products, it's very simple to use. All you gotta do is press the D for drive. You can press once more to activate sport mode. 
Um, and then you can shift via the paddle shifters if you go for the touring trim or above. To go into reverse, you'll just pull back on the trigger. And when you do, you will notice a standard backup camera pop up. Uh, we do have front and rear parking sensors on this model, as well as the active trajectory. And you can switch between three different views as well. Additionally, the mirrors tilt down to help you see the parking lines better. And then back behind the shifter, you do have a button here to change between your drive modes. You have four different modes, a normal, snow, mud, and sand mode. And then this button right here defeats your auto start stop system. Now moving on up here, we come to our rear DVD player, which is on the higher end models. Um, and you will also find next to it your seat controls. Now three stage heating became standard on the EX trim and above last year. However, seat ventilation is still exclusive to the Elite and now also the Black Edition since it is based on the Elite. But as far as your main climate control, that is standard three zone automatic climate control across all the models except for the LX. Now you do have very simple controls of course, you just have these little toggles to adjust the temperature up and down, you've got your fan speeds, zones, um, and then right below it here we even have our rear settings. So we can turn on and off there. We can click that to make the adjustments. And you can even lock out the people in the back from making their own adjustments um, if you're a parent or whatnot. All right, so the next thing up the dash here are our audio systems. Now, LX through the EXL come with a six speaker audio system, but when you go for the touring or above, uh, that gets upgraded to a 590 watt 10 speaker sound system. So we'll go ahead and take a quick sample. Sound quality of this system is definitely good. All right, so now we're at the Honda Link system. Um, this is the upgraded system, uh, so we'll go ahead and take a quick look. So this is the newest version of the Honda Link system. Uh, it was updated last year, so you now have these little tiles here to make it a very simple to use interface with all your applications just kind of lined up. You've also got some short shortcut buttons across the top as well as some capacitive touch buttons along here on the side. Now just kind of hitting the highlights here, uh, we'll start with the navigation. It is Garmin based navigation system. Uh, this is gonna be standard on your Touring, Elite, and Black Edition. As you can see, it is very responsive. Uh, you, have, you have modern features like pinch to zoom, you can change like your angles, and uh, all the expected features. Heading back to the home screen here, uh, we have a few more different features. Uh, the big ones I want to highlight, of course, is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. They are standard equipment on all but the LX, which has the smaller display. Additionally, the Pilot does have some unique features to this model. Um, one of those is going to be your social playlist. Um, that allows you to, to different people to pick out different music in the vehicle and make one playlist. Uh, we also have some features that came over from the Odyssey minivan, like our cabin talk speaker. Uh, so there's a microphone in the vehicle, and it sends out your voice to the back passengers. Uh, and we do also have an AT&T wireless hotspot on board uh, the pilot as well. But anyways, that pretty much hits the highlights. However, we do have a very detailed tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more. A link to that video is provided in the description. Now moving on up here, you will find an auto dimming mirror. Uh, this is the frameless design and you have three Homelink Universal remotes built in on the EXL and up. Now on that same, those same trims there, you will also find this moonroof right here. This is the standard size unit. However, when you choose the Elite or the Black Edition, you also have a second panel back in the back that goes across the second and third rows.
overall, the pilot's cabin uh, continues to be a very, very pleasant place to spend time. Uh, you have so much space and uh, so much comfort in here. And uh, really, it's just set off by having the extra black edition um, seats and different accents in here. Definitely gives it just a kind of a cooler look in addition to having all of the practicality. And when you open the door, you will notice that the seat does move back to help with easier entry and exit. But anyways, that does it for the front areas. So now let's move on to the equally important back areas. Alrighty, so heading around to the second row of the 2020 Honda Pilot Black Edition, you are going to find the same amount of space as you would last year. So you're going to find 38 inches of rear legroom and 40 inches of rear headroom, uh, which is pretty class competitive. It's actually a little bit larger than the Honda Pilot and Nissan Pathfinder. Now turning over to the door trim, it is a very nice one. So you do have leather wrapping across all of the bottom area. And on this black edition, we do have some red stitching. Now up above that, we do also have a rear window sunshade, which comes on the EXL trims and higher. And in addition to that, we do have two cup holders, as well as some storage down below that. Now turning over to the seats themselves, uh, these are the black edition seats, so we do have this red uh, perforation as well as stitching. And I'm sure you might be noticing that these are captain's chairs, and that is available on the Touring and Elite trims. However, you can get a bench seat on the Touring if you want that. Now it is also worth no noting that we do have a sliding and reclining function. Now here in the center, since this is a very family-oriented vehicle, you do have plenty of features back here. So we do have these rear vents across all, most of the trims, and down below that you will also have your own climate controls. So you can adjust your temperature as well as uh, fan speed and zones. And off to the side, you will also notice that this Elite model does have three-stage heated rear seats. Now down below that, we do also have several connections. We have an HDMI port, as well as a household-style outlet, and two smart charging USB ports. Now here in the center area, since we do have the captain's chairs, uh, obviously we do have these little armrests, uh, but we do also have two cup holders integrated into the floor as well as a little storage tray. Now up top you will also notice that this Elite model does have the dual panel moonroof, uh, so we do have plenty of light entering in the cabin, it really helps to air out it. and turning over, you will also notice one of the pilot's uh, nice features, and that is that this rear seat entertainment system is standard on the EXL Navi trims and higher. And of course, in addition to that, you do also have the cabin control and cabin talk speakers. Uh, so the cabin control system allows you to adjust the rear climate, entertainment system, social playlist, and navigation, and that is on the EX trim and higher, and the cabin talk speakers are on the EXL Navi uh, trim and higher. Now, in addition to the rear seat entertainment, you do also have a set of wireless headphones, actually two sets. And off to the side, we do have some lighting, as well as an assist grip and a coat hook. Now, as far as your space is concerned, like I mentioned, this is on par with a lot of the rivals, if not larger. Uh, so behind your seating position, I have about six to eight inches of rear leg room, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat, so I'm very, very comfortable back here. Now to get into the third row itself, Honda has made it really, really easy. So all you have to do is locate this little button, push it, and it does fold the seat as well as slide it right out of the way. Now as far as in the back, you are going to find a very class competitive amount of space. So now let's go ahead and get back there and see what it's like for an adult. Alright, so getting back here, my first impression is actually pretty good. Uh, so I actually have about two inches of rear leg room, uh, which is pretty impressive, especially considering that the seat is slid all the way back. And my feet do even have a spot to uh, slide up underneath the seat, which is very nice. However, one thing I am noticing is that the thigh support is a little bit lacking. 
Uh, this pretty much sits flat to the floor, so it's not super comfortable, uh, but it will be all right for most people on a short trip. Now, as far as the amenities, you do have like three cup holders back here, as well as vents on the side. And you do even have another light. And on this top end elite model, the sunroof does really help to uh, make your headroom seem like it's a lot more. Now heading around to the tailgate, it is hands-free power on the Touring and Elite trims. A regular power tailgate is standard on both of the EXL trims as well. But in order to open this hands-free version, all you have to do is quickly uh, swipe your foot under the bumper, and it will open right up. Now once inside the pilot's trunk, you are going to find another class competitive amount of space. You will find 16 cubic feet of space behind the third row seats. That expands to 47 cubic feet if you fold them. And if you fold all of the seats, it goes to 84 cubic feet. Now, like I said, that is pretty class competitive, so it's right on par with that of the Toyota Highlander and Nissan Pathfinder. Now, as far as how Honda finishes it back here, it is a very nice place. Uh, so we do have a nice carpeted floorboard. And underneath of the floor, we actually have another large storage area. So as you can see, this is probably about six to eight inches deep and it goes across the entire cargo floor. Now off to the sides, we do have a little integrated storage cubby. And on this side, we have another one that's actually quite deep as well. Now in order to fold the seats themselves, it is a pretty simple process. So all you have to do is grab this little strap and then push forward. And once you do, as you can see, it does give you a nice and flat loading floor. Now coming over to the passenger seat, it is power adjusting on this Elite model. And in front of the passenger, you do have nice materials, as well as a good sized glove box. Uh, it is dampened, however it is not felt lined. And up top, we do have a sun visor with mirrors and lights, and it does also detach and extend. But anyway, guys, that sums up all of the rear features of the 2020 Honda Pilot. So now let's go ahead and get on the road and see how this Black Edition drives. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this vehicle's powertrains. Um, now, you do have the same engine. You've got one engine across all the models, uh, but the transmissions change. So you have a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine that makes 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, the same as it always has. Um, but, like I was saying, you've got two different transmissions. So you're going to have a 6-speed automatic transmission with the LX, EX, and EXL, and that comes with the traditional shifter. Then when you go for the uh, Touring or above, that's where you'll get this electronic shifter. Um, and the 9-speed automatic transmission. As far as putting power to the ground, uh, you have standard front-wheel drive or optional all-wheel drive on all the trims until you get to the Elite level or this Black Edition, and they have standard all-wheel drive. And then finally, for your fuel economy, uh, you do have a few different ratings since you've got the different transmissions. Um, so what you'll be looking at is 19 City, 27 Highway, 22 combined with front-wheel drive for the 6-speed automatic models. And then for the 9-speed automatic models, front-wheel drive is going to be 20 city, 27 highway, 23 combined. But anyways, that is pretty much it for the powertrain information, so now we'll go ahead and take it out on the road. So first taking off in the 2020 Pilot. 
first thing that strikes me, uh, as it has in the past, is just how smooth the pilot is. I, there, its focus is definitely on comfort, and uh, you just take off, and it's just buttery, buttery smooth. This powertrain, the V6 makes like very little sound, uh, like zero vibrations or anything. Yeah. You can't even feel it or anything like that. And it's just very linear. Uh, definitely a very nice power plant. I mean, this really is one of the smoothest engines that we've ever been in. It just always does it. It does these three and a half liters, especially in like, you know, this and the Highlander, they're just so smooth. Getting up to highway speed, uh, power definitely feels more than adequate. Um, you know, this is a big three-row vehicle, but yet it doesn't feel underpowered. Some of the competition does feel underpowered, uh, but this definitely seems like it gets things up to speed uh, really well. Like I said, once again, just very comfortably, very quietly. Um, it just kind of just executes everything in such a way that it just blends into the background. You know, in riding here at 55 miles an hour, I can just say how comfortable I am. You know, like we've been mentioning, comfort is the top priority with this pilot. They're not trying to mix sport in or anything like that. Um, and this is just gonna be comfort for all three rows. I mean, you hit, I mean, we're going over a bridge. You can barely hear it. Um, and you can't really feel any of the bumps either. Uh, and that's just gonna be a testament to how comfortable this car is gonna be. If you wanna do a road trip, everyone in your family is going to be comfortable in this car. And the complete lack of uh, road and wind noise is also very impressive. We could have a conversation whispering and yeah. we would be able to hear each other easily. It's that quiet. Um, you know, it's definitely it definitely seems to me, I'm trying to think of rivals that I've driven recently, uh, one of them would be the Pathfinder. This is definitely quieter than the Pathfinder. I am noticing the 9-speed automatic. I really cannot uh, tell these shifts. You know, just kind of accelerating there under kind of normal acceleration, you really cannot tell when this car shifts at all, uh, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, this uh, transmission was retuned last year during the refresh. Um, previously, there had been some complaints about it, and it, they've definitely done a good job. It seems pretty responsive. Um, like Mason said, the shifting is, is smooth under different throttle applications. The only small thing that I have noticed is just a little bit of a hesitation when you're shifting between drive and reverse. It just takes like a little second more than some other vehicles that I've driven. Um, but nothing, nothing bad and nothing that you wouldn't get used to. Now we do also have a uh, auto start stop system on this model with the 9 speed automatic transmission. Um, being as hot as it is, and it's very very hot today, um, Honda has tuned it where it won't really activate because the AC is on, they don't want you to lose the, the coolness. But yeah, this is pretty much the way that uh, Honda, ex you know, expects owners to drive it. And, uh, you know, it really does a superb job on this type of, in this type of environment, you know. You're going to be driving the city, you're going to be driving on the highway, you're going to be doing stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, it's really hard to find fault with this package in these environments, you know. It is just so comfortable, it's so quiet. Um, I mean, and you have so much space for all of the family. It, it really is a, a superb overall package. Alrighty, and now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for this 2020 Honda Pilot. So the prices I'm about to mention are for front wheel drive, so keep that in mind. 
Um, so for the very base LX model, you're going to start at $31,550. If you want to upgrade to the EX, that's going to be $34,430. The EXL is $37,860. The Touring is $42,620. And then you have the Elite, which is all-wheel drive only. That's going to be $48,120. Now finally, we have this top-end black edition, which I'm sure you know by now is based on the Elite trim, and that's not going to cost too much more. That's going to be $49,620. Now as with pretty much every Honda, there are not any options. You kind of just pick the trim level that you want. Uh, so once we add in the destination charge of $1,095, uh, this particular model as equipped comes in at $50,715. Uh, which is, you know, pretty competitive with the class. A lot in this class will top the $50,000 price range. Um, and like I mentioned, this is as expensive as you can get the Pilot. Um, so this is pretty much top dollar. Well, guys, we've enjoyed watching the very first in-depth look at the 2020 Honda Pilot Black Edition Elite. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.